Hey. Hey. Guess what? What? I'm really excited about this week's episode. You want to know why? Why? It features my Just Because plant. I know what that is. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, it's probably um, not a big surprise <laughs> that it's this beautiful lotus. Mm, it really is so pretty. And for a photographer, it provides wonderful subject material. It's never ending. Mm. Every bloom is different in some way. Uh, and ju they're just so spectacular. And the flower has so many different stages that are interesting. Yes. The seed pods are fascinating. Well, and we'll be showing all of these different stages of the lotus mm -hmm. and how we also propagate them. Right. Because it's one of those I like to have a lot of. <laughs> so you want to tell them where we went today? We did. We discovered a Japanese lotus garden right at our back door practically. Yep. And it is massive, so that's really be fun images to show you. So, Farron, you're the, the expert, if nothing else, by sheer hours of observation. Mm -hmm. So what comes first? Something beautiful rising from the mud. Okay, very cool. That's what comes first. All of this will have died back in the winter to nothing. And from the mud rises these beautiful lotus leaves. If this were a water lily, you would call it a lily pad. Mm -hmm. And then next, you'll see these beautiful blooms rise. They're so pristine, it's hard to imagine that they come out of something that feels so thick and murky. Right, <laughs> something to something beautiful and bright. Mm -hmm. So we'll start there mm -hmm. and show all the different stages and show you this beautiful lotus. Suzanne, you'll see that I have about three inches of standing water above an entire bed of mud. Yeah. Is that a bloom I see? That's a Coming bloom. Coming up out of the yes. mud. And do you see this? Yes. Uh, it, once it unfurls, that's mm -hmm. another lotus leaf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is just so fascinating that all of this generates and rises from the mud. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. All right, see these stamen? The pollen is right on those stamen. The seed pod will continue to mature, and this is where we get the seeds if you want to harvest these by the seed. There's also a tuber in the water underneath that can be divided, and you can divide your lotus that way. So a tuber or the seed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, That's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Baron. I'm guessing since these seeds are still green, this one is less mature than... That's right. We'll wait for this one, all of those seeds to turn very dark and harden off a little bit. Those would be soft to the touch if we were to extract them from the seed pod right now. So we'll let the sun do what the sun is meant to do in time Yeah. and mature these before we pluck these from the seed pod. Here is a mature seed pod. Oh, it's so beautiful. Isn't this gorgeous? That must have been a huge flower. It was. And now these seeds, the darkness of them, show you that they're ready for me to pluck them out of the seed pod here. Okay. So I'll take these seeds and I'll push up from the bottom and the pointed end is out and mm -hmm. then you'll hear a little popping sound and that's the dimpled end mm. that was in the pod. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let me take these out. We're going to propagate these okay. for another planting of this amazing lotus. Mm. So here we've gathered our seeds. They're mm -hmm. ready. Mm -hmm. Let's get started. Right. So we have the seed that we plucked from the seed pod earlier. And on this end, you'll see a pointed end on this end is a little dimple. So this is the dimpled end, and the dimpled end is the end that we sand. The seed coating is so thick on a lotus that you literally have to sand it, drop it in water, and allow the water to soften it. So the goal, can you see that little bit of white? Mm -hmm. All right, we wanna, have a little bit more of that than not. What grit sandpaper is that? 150. 
You could probably do a heavier grit. All right, we're gonna allow that to work for us and we'll drop this in the water. So it's ready to go in the water. And the reason I use a strainer is that you really need to change out your water, if not daily, every other day. And if you'll watch, I can just lift this, pour the water out of that cup, refill it, drop this back in. That way I don't handle the seeds in a way that might compromise them. Okay, let's see what we have. These have been soaking. You can see the top that was filed down with sandpaper. And I'm just going to begin peeling away. How many days have these soaked? These have soaked uh, a day, about a 24 oh. hour period. The top is the easiest, typically, to start peeling away. As I get further down the seed, see that was a little bit resistant, so I'm gonna just drop that back in and it's okay for me to come back tomorrow and continue the peeling away process. So we've allowed these to soak more and now the sides are peeling away quite nicely. Some people take even the skin here and remove it. I don't. I haven't found it necessary in the whole process, but it does make it prettier. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this one, we'll let it continue to soak until the seed bursts open, which it could not have done with this hard outer shell. And this is why we took the time to let this hard outer shell soak, get soft, and in another day, day and a half, this will pop open. That has a very interesting look. Okay, we're back. And you'll see that I have a bit of a crack. And I can see that the seed is starting to open. But look at this one. Ah, there's the green growth coming from the middle of the seed. So it's had time to soften. And I don't know if you can tell that this little, this stem is looped over itself. When it gets to this stage, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in this. How many days have these been in that have the tall sprout on them? These have been in here about three days. Well, Suzanne, we've got some that are ready to drop in here. Why don't you take them out of our smaller jar and place them in our much taller vase here. You just, yep, you very gingerly grasp. There we go. Stem and just drop it in. And again, the goal is to let these have time to really set so that when you place them in the mud, they're ready for their permanent home. As Suzanne says, Everyone has to have a plant just because, well, this photographer is in love with this lotus plant, just because. Look, Farron, here we can see that the lotus seeds have produced roots, mm -hmm. and they're pink. Wow, isn't that beautiful? Like the bloom. I love that. I do too. So now we have all of these beautiful roots and shoots that are ready to be planted. So I'm gonna find one that has a really good root system and it's time to put them in the mud. So let's plant a few of these. As you can see, I have filled a container with mud. This is mostly clay soil with some potting type soil. You do not want a rich material. It will cause everything to rot. So we have this beautiful seed ready to be planted. The roots are healthy. I have the true leaves. Carefully put the dirt in. Like you would any plant, just very carefully plant it.
to start, you probably want about an inch of dirt above the seeds. So we'll pack this in. Okay, very nice and firm. The roots can feel their new foundation, their new spot, their new home. And I'm not going to splash the water directly on the mud. I'm gonna let it just cascade over my hand, come into the pot that way. I'm gonna put about three inches of water in the container. We've successfully planted our seed with a beautiful pink root into the mud. We've covered it with about three inches of water. I'm not going to put this particular setup in direct sunlight. I do want it to get some sunlight while it continues to harden off and mature. So I'll put it in a little half shade, half sunlight until I feel like it's really good and healthy and ready for full sun. You find us today at a gorgeous lotus garden and we're excited to share with you some of these beautiful flowers and just the the marvel that this is mm. look at the size of this it be at least two feet in diameter i think so maybe more Fabulous. spectacular bloom is massive and you'll see that the tip is pink uh, what i've noticed of the color here is that the bottom is white the tips are pink uh, very different than the lotus that I I have but it's just gorgeous and the Sun will bleach the pink out fairly rapidly it's not a flower that holds its color for a long period of time it's beautiful it's spectacular. what else do you see dragonflies I heard a frog just then yes bees bees pollinator so, action happening right so the stamen inside the lotus flower has almost a million grains of pollen a phenomenal amount. No nectar, no juice, but it does have the pollen for the bees. They love it. It's hard to comprehend. Let's end this episode and dwell for a few moments in the healing, calming, soothing effect of nature.